Welcome to Mix LA. I'm Chris Lord Algae, and Waves and I bring you Mixing with Depth. Something I do every day, something I've been doing my whole life, is trying to create more and more depth. Depth is part of every mix I do. I feel that every mix has to surround you. Depth means how do we create a three-dimensional aspect to our mixes? How do we make them become something that surrounds you, something that is all-encompassing? For me, it's simple. It's been an accumulation of how I use effects, utilizing reverbs, delays, combining them to create a palette that creates a three-dimensional aspect in your mixes. In Pro Tools, in your DAW, it's easy to slap a reverb on a vocal and say, wow, I have depth. That's not really depth. That's more of a mistake, okay? Because what happens is this reverb becomes very obviously the only thing in the record that sounds different. To me, mixing with depth means not just adding reverb or adding a delay to this or that. It means creating a landscape that actually gives you dimension, okay? By just adding it here, adding it there, that's not the case. It's kind of actually making a dimension out of the whole thing by putting your mix into a space, okay? Putting it into a place where you can make it something different. I'm going to explain how it's accomplished on my workstation, okay? We're going to go back in time and show you how we work on vintage equipment, okay? This is my workstation. This is how I do it. Further on in our program, we'll explain to you how it's done in Pro Tools, but I'm showing you how I get the sound I want in my head through what I have, my tools here. The world that I came from was very simple. When we started mixing and we started using outboard reverbs, we had a plate, we had a chamber. We may have had one reverb for vocals and maybe one digital reverb, one to use on something else. And then maybe we had a delay unit or tape slap. So it was very limited. We did not have a complete toolbox of effects, okay? So everything was shared. Just because you have a vocal reverb doesn't mean you, can put, you can't put a taste on something else, okay? And just because you have a room reverb doesn't mean you can't put that on the vocal. So I look at the as a palette of flavors. I have this flavor and I can combine them together. That methodology of what I do with that continues today. Many people in Pro Tools, and I've seen this, I see sessions where everything's got its own individual reverb, okay? Which is great if you like that sound, but I feel that if you wanna mix with depth, when you share your sounds through common reverbs, that commonality gives the sound of a record a, a blend, a landscape that actually works together. If everything has something individual on it, each one of these individual elements starts to poke out of the mix. And to me, that's not what I like. That's not what I prefer. I prefer saying, you know what? We're going to use four reverbs, four delays, and we're going to make everything in that mix work with those elements. And then when you combine all those elements, you get a much more congenial sound, or you get something that actually feels like it's in one place. I find that to dispel the myth, it's like, look at, at your reverbs and delays as flavors, not as I have to have one in every track. That's just my way of doing it. I have so many reverbs in my room. If you look around, I have one of each. I've picked the four or five that work for me. And it's how you blend these reverbs is what creates the depth. I find that a vocal reverb, a drum reverb, a hall reverb, and a reverb that's, well, AMS non-lin, that's kind of gated sounding. That's just short burst of excitement. That gives me the four flavors that I need. I need a typical plate with pre-delay. I need a tight, bright room. I need a long haul. And I need something weird, which is like the non-lin sound. So it has a different envelope, okay? Now, the way these reverbs work is they're set it and forget it. So that is the default setting. I don't have to go back there and touch it. I would rather have six reverbs all set the same and then use the blending of the faders to make that happen. I'm going to combine these flavors to get the ultimate end effect. So that's our reverb department. In the next chapter, I'll show you exactly what gear I'm using on each send. So with delays, what do I need for that? Well, I need a slap delay so I can always have a John Lennon slap right on top of the vocal. I need what I call my stereo time delays, which is eighth note or quarter note. I need my throw delay, which is for the long special effect, for the deeper, longer moments. And I always want to have what I call the crowd which is 
multiple taps of short delays, which will make things sound like they're bouncing off the corners of a small room. So I use four reverbs, four delays. This is my palette for my mixes, okay? I can mix a pop song, a metal song, a jazz song, a country song, a spaced out freak out prog song with all the same settings. And it's just a matter of how I blend the returns or how I change the sends a little bit on the console. I can mix any song with this setup. I don't have to change the setup no matter what. I can change some delay times, obviously, but I can still use this same palette on anything. Generally, what I like is to have this palette ready to go at all times. But the thing that separates it and creates the dimension and the depth that's very difficult to recreate in a box is the fact that you're sending to reverbs from the delays. So I have the option of sending any one of my delays to any one of my reverbs to set it back into the mix. For example, if the vocal has a vocal reverb on it, a little bit of room reverb in it, on it, right? then why shouldn't the delay that you're putting on the vocal have the same thing? So that's the mentality. So that's what I want you to think about. When you're looking at a landscape of the Wild West, of the backdrop of America, and you see great hills and mountains and fields, okay? Imagine your music is bouncing all the way back there. So when you put reverb, short, long, whatever, on your delays, it starts to layer this effect that goes deep and into the background. To me, that's the difference, to be able to do that. If I didn't have reverb on my delays, they would sound so apparent. And I think this is the mistake that I hear in a lot of records. I hear records where the delay is very apparent or mixes that the delay is apparent. The delay is not there to enhance, it's noticeable. So for me, mixing with depth is to be able to have a landscape of effects without being able to pick any of them out. Our vocal delays, if we're using them right here, okay, well, that they're the most important ones. If you have these delays going and they're dry, they sound alien. So I'll end up saying, okay, let's start by putting the vocal reverb also on those delays. Now that vocal reverb's delaying 150 milliseconds. So now this cascading effect sets the delays in the background, right? I'll say, okay, I have that reverb on there. Let's add a little bit of the room reverb. That'll connect it so you don't hear the delay of the reverb our vocal throw delay may have more reverb on it based on the song. If I want something to sink back into the wild, wild west, I have this palette of adding reverbs to the delays, okay? If I want it to be in a smaller landscape, less reverb on the delays. But the thing in the mixing, that this what makes it even more interesting. Because you have these returns, they're not fixed, okay? I'm sure many of you in Pro Tools will have your reverb returns set and forget. No, to me, manipulating your returns makes the three-dimensionality happen, right? So by riding these returns at certain moments or certain scenes, you create almost a movie out of it. I set up the wild, wild west. I have mountains, I have rivers, I have streams, I have trees. Everyone is in the same place. They feel connected and seem together. So that think that's part of the magic to me is by using the reverbs in that fashion. Let's talk about the landscape. Let's talk about the space I create. There's nothing natural about it. I'm not trying to, ooh, create a natural cathedral or natural room. I really don't care. I'm trying to just make music sound cool. And by doing that, I use the tools I can to make space or to extend stuff or make it sound wide or, or, or three-dimensional. I think mixing is really all about what do you hear in your head and what do you want the effects to do? I never think about, oh, I want to make this sound really organic and natural. The words organic, natural, warm, what does that mean? It's bullshit. It means nothing to me, okay? Okay, if you want something to be warm and analog and organic, okay, that's dull. That means you probably have less effects on it. So let's translate those stupid words into, you hear a song and you're like, okay, you know what? That song's not gonna really work if I put tons of delays and reverb on it. And actually, actually, the song's gonna work really dry and really forward. Nothing we do in mixing is organic. It's all manipulating the audio. So that's exactly what I try to do here, is not worry about any of those rules or barriers. I just bust the barriers down and make it cool. Now that we've covered what I use in putting together my mixes, let's move on and I'll show you exactly what pieces of gear I use in my next episode 
of Mixing with Death. It's 2020 vision, we can all see division. Shedding all our glasses, getting 2020 vision. Precision, more clarity in sight. People come together, see more clarity, rock and right. No more blind, it's 2020 vision. 